Well, it's good to be with you again on this week three, and I hope you had a blessed Easter weekend. Uh, we had a glorious, glorious Easter weekend, and uh, we didn't even know if it was going to be possible to have a service, a drive-up service, but um, the rain broke, the, the thunderstorms moved temporarily, and we was able to have a glorious, glorious service. Our pastor did an outstanding job, and uh, we just felt the Lord's presence so close. But here we are, uh, for this devotion, and I'm excited to share some things with you that I felt like God has laid on my heart. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to apply this devotion to myself. If anybody doesn't get help out of this devotion, I know I have because God has spoken to me uh, through, through this thought that I'd like for us to discuss. So in this devotion today, I'd like for us to read from Matthew chapter 16. And if you have your Bibles, I would love for you to join along with me. And as we read this, the target verse that I want to get to will come in, in a minute, but I want us to focus in on some context here to this uh, passage that I have in mind for us to read. And specifically, I'd love for us to look at Peter, to th read this passage through the lens of looking at Peter. And Peter, those of you Bible readers, are you already know this, Peter was known as the speak your mind kind of person. And uh, I'm sure you may even have a church member that you would think, yeah, that's that's a speak your mind kind of person. They would be kind of like a Peter. And you may even have a family member that uh, you would say, uh, yeah, they're a speak your mind kind of person. And if they're sitting beside you, please don't look at them. Please don't nod or anything. Uh, we want to get through this devotion without bodily injury. Uh, but thinking of speak your mind uh, kind of people, as a child, and many of you parents will identify with stories like this, Mama made reference in her devotion of how she was talking about us being in full-time ministry uh, so many years ago and me and Sandy being small children. Well, to zoom in a little deeper on that aspect, uh, I was probably, well, I was seven and a half when we started traveling full-time, so I would have been about eight, somewhere along that time frame um, when this story happened. But we were at a church. We went to a church for the very first time. And uh, back then, I was so young that I didn't play an instrument. I didn't sing. And so mom and the family, they left me on the, on the pew beside this lady. And so I rem as young as I was, I remember this. I do remember this occasion. You know, they were up there singing and pouring their heart out. And uh, I remember starting to stare at this lady. And apparently I'd stared at her for quite a while because pretty soon she, she looked down at me and she said, um, are you trying to tell me something? And uh, I looked back up at her and I said, yeah, I just want you to know that you look like a witch that I saw one time. And looking back now, I can't believe those words came out of my mouth. And where that term witch come from, I have no clue. I mean, I, we went to public school, so I don't know if it was Halloween or what prompted that uh, speak your mind moment when I just stated what came to my mind that, ma'am, you look like a witch. And mom, the lady shared that with her at the church and mom was just horrified, understandably so. And I remember as a kid, I was always confused of why does, why does my dad and my mom, why do they always get nervous when I just open my mouth? And uh, but I guess I've answered that question. It seemed like I was always just, just speaking my mind. Another instance, uh, we were at a church and mom at that time was, was trying out one of those new, new fango diets or whatever. And, uh, so I was down at the pastor's home and the pastor's wife handed me a cake and she said, uh, here, take this to your, take this to your mom. And I said, well, mom can't have this. She's on a diet. So I handed the cake back to her. And she said, well, she's on a diet, really? She said, well, how much does your mom weigh? And I said, oh, I don't know, about uh, 550 pounds. And so that got related to mom. So I'm sure uh, mom had many moments, even beyond the stories that I've heard, where she said, oh, my goodness, you know, how could he have said such a thing? So, and, and that's childhood stories. That's, that's all funny, and that's all well and good, and we can laugh about stuff like that. But digging deep into a topic like this I, I hope we'll take concepts like we're fixing to learn and apply it to very serious 
situations that we're going through during this time. I, I can't imagine the things that you're going through and I could spend all day sharing things that we've personally had to work through uh, when it comes to, to being encouraged in the Lord during these times because life is going to be life and, and we'd all agree life has been ex incredibly difficult for the last several weeks. So jumping into our scripture reading, let's start at the, Matthew chapter 16. Let's start at verse 13, and I'll try to move along quickly so we can get to the focal point of this devotion. It says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he saith unto them, Whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And so we, we see how Jesus is commending Peter. He's the first one to speak up. He's speaking his mind. And he says that he says it's spot on. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Jesus blesses him and commends him for his words uh, that were exactly right. Now, we're, we're thankful Peter spoke up and, and the things he said were great. But look here. This is what I want us to focus on. Look here in verse 21. This is the same chapter. But in verse 21, things immediately take a turn. Uh, verse 21 says, from that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So he's speaking to them about what we just celebrated on, on Easter resurrection weekend of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So when Peter hears this, this is the one that just got done speaking his mind and he spoke the truth. But listen here in verse 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. So Peter, in modern day language, he's saying, Lord, not on my life. This ain't going to happen to you. What you just said is not going to happen. So when he says this, watch in here, verse 23, But he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So, Jesus, in this chapter, we don't know the exact timeline of, of, of chapter 16, but in the context of this chapter, Jesus, in verse 17, had just blessed Peter for what he said, but Peter so quickly turns, and he's speaking from from the mind of the flesh he's not speaking from the mind of christ that he had got that inspiration from to say lord you're the christ when the same jesus told him what was fixing to happen to him peter immediately switches to the to carnal mode and he's operating i believe out of fear because he loved jesus and he wouldn't have wanted to see anything happen to him and we have uh a confirmation of that when they was trying to take jesus captive and 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 peter draws out his sword and cuts off the the servant of the high priest ear so i don't think peter was doing anything out of contempt i feel like he was operating out of fear but jesus jesus looks at him and mark actually mark's gospel says when peter had had, had spoken that that jesus turned and he looked at the disciples and rebuked peter so in mark's account it's almost like mark is trying to draw our attention to the fact that Jesus looked at the disciples and he seen the effect that Peter's words were having on the disciples. And so Jesus turns and rebukes Peter and he says, get thee behind me, Satan. And so in studying in, in the commentaries, uh, they all agree. And I know we would all agree. Jesus is not calling Peter Satan, but I like what one commentator said. And to me, it puts this whole lesson in perspective to me he's saying peter I, I need you to listen to what you're just saying look at the larger context of what you just said you was operating out of a carnal emotion a carnal mindset the same peter that spoke those words of thou art the christ the same peter has got locked into a mindset now so quickly got locked into a mindset that's carnal 
And it's not the words of the Lord. It's not it's not the mind of the Lord. He's he's taking on the mind of the enemy. And that's one of the things the commentaries were pointing out is the word Satan actually can be translated as adversary. In other words, Jesus is saying, Peter, you're you're speaking the words of my adversary when you're talking that way. And we all have to be careful. Again, I'm going to put myself right in the middle of all this and say we do have to be careful when our emotions feel low and we feel exhausted, we feel weak, that we do have to be very careful what comes out of our mouth because if we're not careful, somebody else can be talking. And then by that somebody, I mean our enemy, our adversary can be talking. And if we're not careful, we're going to start translating or transmitting that inf that same information to others around us and it could have a devastating effect on those around us that are struggling i remember as a as a child that uh me or sandy would come to mom or dad and we would express something that we were battling in our mind and, and inadvertently one of us would say you know the devil told me such and such the devil said this and the devil said that and time after time after time mom or dad would say who and we'd say the devil told me such and such such and such and they'd say who and they would do that over and over again until they could get me or sandy to recognize what we were just saying the devil said such and such and once that point got across they'd say listen you got to realize who who's talking who just told you that and i remember mom specifically saying one time listen if the devil's talking to you then hang up the receiver. Don't don't keep listening to what he's trying to get over on your mind. And while we're going through this time, I know it's discouraging. I know it can be. And we've made reference to this. Some of you, you're laid off of work. You don't you don't have the normal employment that you're used to. And your schedule's turned upside down. Your church worship's turned upside down. And it's it's going to be very easy. In fact, you may have turned this devotion on this morning feeling those emotions I'm describing where you feel very discouraged. But let me encourage you through this devotion that when those when those negative thoughts, when you feel so low, be very careful of who you pick up the phone to listen to, if I can say it that way. Be careful of who's talking to you during these times because the devil loves to get his foot in the door when we feel low and when we feel emotionally weak. And going on with that, if the devil is talking to you and you know it's discouragement, be very careful. Can I encourage you? Be very careful of not transmitting the devil's information because while you may feel discouraged, somebody around you may even be feeling lower. And if you spew those words uh, at random and not guarding your emotions and especially your words, then you could have a devastating impact on those around you. So I hope you are encouraged. And uh, I'm going to take this devotion personally to heart and try to make sure that as we're going through these ups and downs, the roller coaster that we talked about, that we will be strong in the Lord and let him be our strength in spite of how we feel on the outside and emotionally on the inside. God bless you. Trust you have a wonderful day and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time.